FEMA administration, Administrator Long is traveling to the affected areas today, and the President will be making a trip to Florida on Thursday. The President's action during these times demonstrate why he's a true leader who can bring the country together and get things done for the American people. He wants to continue building unity by working on more issues supported by both parties, especially restoring fairness to our broken tax code and cutting taxes for hardworking Americans. Last week in North Dakota, he invited Democratic Senator Heidi Heitkamp up on stage to welcome her during his tax reform event in her home state. Tonight, he'll host Senator Heidkamp along with colleagues of hers from both parties, Senators Donnelly, Hatch, Manchin, Thune, and Toomey, for a dinner at the White House to discuss working together to achieve real tax reform that allows Americans to keep more of their hard-earned dollars. Ahead of the dinner this evening, Secretary Mnuchin and NEC Director Cohn are on the Hill this afternoon to continue their conversations with key members in this important policy push. The Vice President also attended Senate Republicans' weekly policy lunch today and is meeting with House leaders on the upcoming legislative agenda. On issues ranging from national security to hurricane relief to keeping our government functioning, the President is reaching across the aisle and to cut deals that help the American people. The President truly believes, as he often says, that in order to succeed and grow, we must work as one team, one people, and one American family. Finally, speaking of family, I wanted to say a big congratulations to Eric and Laura Trump on the birth of their son, Eric Luke Trump, this morning. We all look forward to meeting him soon. And with that, I'll take your questions. John. Uh, Sarah, on tax reform, uh, Legislative Director Mark Short uh, today, speaking to Christian Science Monitor Breakfast, said that the one thing that you learn from Obamacare is that you can't even rely on your own party to bring the votes across <coughs> the finish line. But then at the same time, you haven't really been able to get much bipartisan support either. So with that in mind, what is the president hoping to do tonight with this bipartisan dinner? I think it's start that conversation, start talking about things that we all agree on. Uh, as I've said many times, I think most everyone can agree that Americans should keep more of their money than the government. They spend it certainly far better than the government can. And I think that's something that is a common goal that a lot of people want to come together on. I think by nature of them sitting down with the president, that's a very good first start. I'm not going to get ahead of uh, the dinner tonight, but I think that it shows and is a great indicator for both sides that we have a big agenda and a very ambitious agenda legislatively this fall, and we want to work together to make sure we can get as much of that done as looks, possible. Looks like you might be able to get some bipartisan buy-in on the idea of lowering taxes for corporations, certainly middle-class tax cuts, but the de Democrats are really drawing the line at tax cuts for the highest income earners. Can, can the President cut some sort of deal with them that sticks to his principle that then also satisfies them? or? Is there an un, 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 uh, unbridgeable gulf there? The, the president, I think, has demonstrated uh, both in his uh, business world and as president that he can make deals. And that's certainly what he's looking to do. And he's going to work hard to make sure that we get the de best deal possible on tax reform. And I think that starts with things like tonight, having this conversation uh, and moving that ball forward, working bipartisan support from both sides. Sir, Stephen? at another event this morning seemed to express some empathy for people who live in high tax states like New York and California. If the administration goes forward and Congress approves a plan that eliminates the deductibility of state and local taxes, theoretically people in those states could see their taxes increase, not decrease. Is the administration uh, committed to doing something to help people in those high tax states? Look, again, we're looking to work with Congress to make sure we get the best deal possible uh, for all Americans across the board, and that includes people in high-tax states. Matthew? Thanks, Sarah. Uh, it's being reported that the Malaysian Prime Minister on his, on his visit here is staying at the Trump Hotel. Mm -hmm. Two questions on that. Did that come up at all in conversations with the President during their meetings? And is it problematic for someone under DOJ investigation to be supporting the President's for-profit company? Uh, I'm not sure about um, if that came up. I'm not aware that that was ever discussed. And I, we certainly don't uh, book their hotel accommodation, so I couldn't speak to the personal decision they made about where to stay here in D.C. Any, any sort of attempt uh, to curry favor with the President? No, I don't. Hey, Sarah. Steve Bannon today apparently told a room full of uh, people that he was speaking to that he talked to the President every two or three days. 
yesterday you said you thought they had only spoken once. So, so do they speak more regularly than maybe you were, were led to believe, or can you give us any insight to how often they're talking? Uh, I don't think they speak certainly not that frequently. I'm aware of a, like two conversations that they've had, uh, and nothing beyond that. So it's not two to three days. It's every two to three days. Not that I'm aware of. Again, I'm then, only aware of two conversations that have taken place. I just want to get you quickly on one other topic. Um, why hasn't President Trump called the president of Mexico in the wake of that earthquake there to offer condolences? Why they actually the have a call scheduled today. It's taking place, I believe, uh, within this hour, and we'll have a readout for you on that this afternoon. Sarah, Maggie. Sarah, apologies if you answered this yesterday, but is the president aware? It's okay. Everybody here likes to ask the same question many times. <laughs> is, um, is the president aware that Steve Bannon uh, described firing James Comey as the biggest mistake in modern political history? Uh, I, whether he is or not, I think that everybody knows exactly where the president stands on that issue. The president uh, is proud of the decision that he made. The president was 100 percent right in firing James Comey. Uh, he knew at the time that it could be bad for him politically, but he also knew and felt he had an obligation to do what was right and do what was right for the American people and certainly the men and women at the FBI. Uh, I think there's no secret. Um, Comey, by his own self-admission, leaked privileged government information. Weeks before President Trump fired him, Comey testified that an FBI agent engaged in the same practice, they'd face serious repercussions. I think he set his own stage for himself on that front. His actions were improper and likely could have been illegal. Comey leaked memos to the New York Times, your own outlet. He politicized an investigation by signaling he would exonerate Hillary Clinton before he ever interviewed her or other key witnesses. Uh, he's very happy with the decision he made, and I think he's been fully vindicated uh, by a lot of those new things and knowing that it was the right one. David. How Florida is uh, the president going and what's he going to be doing down there? Those details are still being finalized. We hope to have uh, some of that ironed out later today, and we'll certainly keep you guys posted on that travel. Jonathan. Uh, Sarah, two questions. First, the follow-up to the Malaysian Prime Minister's visit. Did the ongoing DOJ probe pr corruption trial, that come up in conversation with the president today? And then secondly, a different matter. Next week, of course, the president is going to New York for the United Nations General Assembly. Past presidents usually have a theme or a key idea they want to get across in their speech or some of their individual leader meetings. What will President Trump do? I'm not aware of the specific conversation coming up uh, in today's meetings. In terms of the UN General Assembly, I don't want to get ahead too far. We will plan to outline some of those uh, plans and more details about that trip at the end of this week, uh, as we have done in past practice on those types of meetings, and we'll certainly do that by the end of this week. Yeah. Hallie. Let me just follow up, too. You said that um, the actions of James Comey could have been illegal. You, the other day, referred to potential false testimony. The DOJ is not commenting, but I would put to you, would the president encourage the DOJ to prosecute Comey? Uh, that's not the president's role. That's the job of the Department of Justice and something they should certainly look at. Is that something you'd like to see? Uh, I, I'm not sure about that specifically, but I think uh, if there's ever a moment where we feel someone's broken the law, particularly if they're the head of the FBI, I think that's something that certainly should be looked at. In North Korea, I'm sorry, sorry, my second question on North Korea. Is, it, is this administration determined whether North Korea did test a hydrogen bomb? Uh, we haven't released those details yet. Has the assessment been made, though? Uh, I'm not sure, Hallie. Thank you, Sarah. Yesterday, when you were talking about James Comey, you mentioned that he gave false testimony. I didn't hear you say that again today. Do you still stand by that? I did say that, actually. You did today. say that? Yeah. Okay. And um, he did. Sorry. Separately, um, on when it comes to Steve Bannon, the Wall Street Journal reported that they spoke the other night. That's what Steve Bannon uh, told the gathering in Hong Kong. Do you know if they discussed the 60 Minutes interview, and has the President said that it's something he would like to discuss with Steve Bannon? Uh, he hasn't said whether he'd like to discuss that, at least not to me on that front. Yeah. John Gizzi. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Two questions, if I may. First, going back to John's original question regarding the Christian Science Monitor breakfast this morning, Mark Short was also asked about whether the President still supports Senator Luther Strange. And when I asked you that question, you said legal constraints kept you from answering. He said this morning that uh, he's standing by Senator Strange and he fully supports him in the runoff September 26th. Is that the White House's official position? Uh, again, the President has liberties that I don't, and uh, legally I'm not allowed to comment on specific political elections that are ongoing, so I'm not going to weigh into that conversation. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not in a place where I can comment directly from behind the podium about uh, other, elections that are upcoming. My other question is a political question as well. Uh, two United States Senators, Heller of Nevada 
and Jeff Flake of Arizona face spirited primary challenges. Um, State Representative Justin Simmons, a strong supporter of the President in Pennsylvania, declared his candidacy against Congressman Charlie Dent, who announced his retirement on Friday. Will the White House back challengers to sitting Republicans in primaries? Again, I'm not going to weigh in on uh, elections that are ongoing from the podium. That's something Sarah, that, Sarah. that the Hatch Act prohibits me from being able to do. Sarah. James. Sir, on North Korea, what did the President mean today when he said that the latest UN sanctions resolution was not a big deal? Uh, I think he, he actually said this is a small step and part of the process. Um, but look, I think that the ultimate goal here is a denuclearized Korean Peninsula. That's what we have to push towards. Uh, we're going to continue taking those small steps. But at the same time, we know that those very parties that voted to do this all have to do more. The president's called on them to do more, and we continue to hope that they will. Sarah. Yeah. Uh, is the president comfortable with his son, uh, Donald Trump Jr., testifying publicly up on Capitol Hill? I'm sorry. Can you is, say is the president comfortable with his son, Donald Trump Jr., testifying publicly up on Capitol Hill? Uh, Senator Feinstein has indicated that she'd like to see that happen. And separately, but on uh, on the same. I think she said she'd just like to see him testify. Look, this administration's been very clear. We're going to be transparent and cooperative with this process. We know that there was uh, nothing improper took place, no wrongdoing, and we're ready to see uh, this come to its full conclusion and everybody else to see that as well. The president would be comfortable. The president is, 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 is the, son testifying the president probably. is comfortable with us being fully transparent and cooperating with this process, as we've done every day since it started, and will continue to do as we move forward. And if I may just ask a quick little follow-up question, uh, Jared Kushner, was there any discussion about him stepping aside earlier this year, leaving the administration? No, no uh, conversation that I'm aware of, and certainly uh, no presentation as both. Uh, the president's attorneys have gone on record to say. David. Yeah, uh, sir, Mark Short also said today that I believe that the um, administration would not tie funding for a border wall to some sort of. I believe of he actually said it would be premature to determine whether or not that would happen. So, he, so what, I guess what I'm saying is it, it seemed to leave the impression that uh, the administration would be open maybe to a, uh, a bill um, for the DACA recipients that would legalize mm -hmm. them without any other strings. Is that uh, what you're saying? I, I think what we're saying is what we've been saying all along. We haven't mixed messages here. Uh, we want responsible immigration reform. That hasn't changed. The President's very much committed to the wall. We're also committed to some other uh, principles that we've laid out, and none of those have changed. John Decker. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, just a couple of questions, if I could, about the dinner tonight and uh, your efforts on tax reform. You mentioned uh, guests this evening, three Democratic senators. Uh, Senators uh, Donnelly, Senators Manchin, Senator Heitkamp, all uh, up for re-election next year. Do you know how uh, those particular guests were chosen, first of all? Uh, I think just by their willingness to want to sit down and have these conversations with the President, uh, certainly something that we are looking forward to and hopefully will be very productive uh, steps forward in the process of having a very ambitious legislative agenda for the fall. Tester of Montana uh, indicated today that he was not invited, but is open to talking about tax reform. Uh, does that mean that uh, he perhaps could be a future uh, guest of the president's for dinner? Uh, will the president reach out to Senator Tester in that regard? Uh, the administration's been clear. We want to sit down with anybody who's willing to be serious about real tax reform for this country, about providing real relief for middle class America, and actually and actually looking to make bold changes. Uh, those are the conversations we want to have. And I would imagine if Senator Tester wants to be involved in those and is serious about it, we'd certainly be willing to have that conversation with him. Alex. Uh, last year on the campaign trail, the President said he wouldn't support amnesty. Uh, the last week, he asked Congress to legalize DACA. Uh, so why the change of heart? Uh, I think that the President has spoken out very clearly uh, that he wants us to make this decision uh, based on uh, a variety of factors, but the number one thing is that he wants responsible immigration reform, and part of that is including that in the process. What Trey? Them to, have to want responsible immigration reform? I'm sorry? What convinced them to want responsible immigration reform? <laughs> I think the President's always wanted responsible immigration reform, uh, something that is important for the country moving forward, but he also wants to make sure American jobs are protected, American citizens are protected, and that's why it can't be just one piece but comprehensive. Trey? Uh, thanks, Sarah. Earlier you referenced two things about the former FBI Director James Comey. First, you said 
uh, the leaking of information likely could have been illegal. You went on to say something uh, that could be looked at. Uh, are you encouraging, is this White House encouraging the Department of Justice uh, to investigate the former FBI Director James Comey for leaking information? No, as I told Hallie, this is um, anybody that breaks the law, whatever that process is that needs to be followed, should certainly be looked at if they determine that uh, that's the course of action to take, then they should certainly do that. But I'm not here to ever direct DOJ in, in the actions that they should take. Follow up on a, an earlier question, too. A lot of conversations here in Washington about the midterm elections in 2018. What role is the president looking to play uh, in the 2018 elections? Will he be supporting specific candidates? And will he be using his support as leverage uh, to have those uh, members of Congress support his domestic agenda? Look, I think the president is going to support uh, the agenda and accomplishing things that help America. But in terms of specific elections and whether or not he's going to weigh in, as I've uh, said to a couple of your colleagues already today, I'm not going to be able to weigh in from the podium on that. Sarah, April. Sarah, um, two topics. One, um, can you talk to us about the Tim Scott meeting tomorrow evening and, and what's the crux of it? Um, also, it's supposed to be about Charlottesville, HBCUs, and just the African-American perspective. What would you say is supposed to be taking place? Uh, I, I'm not going to get ahead of their meeting. We'll certainly be happy to provide information uh, after the meeting is over. But at this point, I think it's certainly a conversation that Senator Scott wanted to have with the president, and the president wanted to have the opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with the senator. Uh, I'm not going to get into anything beyond that at this point. Is the HBCU conference happening, or is it not the White House portion? Uh, it is going forward. It is happening. It'll take place here at the White House. And last question, just for an understanding, how does this the, the president receive and give calls from his cell phone um, during work? I mean, I know it sounds very trite and small, but there's been a lot of controversy about how the president is being handled, I guess, by General Kelly and how he keeps certain people in, certain people out. And then you're hearing Steve Bannon say that he's had many calls, and you're saying that uh, well, he's talked to the president several times, and you're saying you, you're not aware of that. So it leads us to believe that it's this conversation, this phone thing. Could you talk to us about the use of his cell phone? Is this like during the day, after hours, or what? Because, I mean, there, there have been stories about this cell phone use and people calling There have it. been a lot of things that you guys have written that I've, I've seen to be controversial. That one hasn't been something I've seen a whole lot about. Uh, but the president... Uh, has access. <laughs> I mean, he can make calls from a landline, too. I'm not really sure what the question is here, whether or not he made a call from a cell phone or a landline. From the White House, those calls are more so logged. You have a log in time versus a cell phone. He, it's his personal phone, correct? The, the, the president, uh, again, I don't sit in on every single call he makes. I'm telling you about what I'm aware of at this point. Uh, certainly will keep you posted, as we do with uh, numerous calls that the president makes throughout the day and through the evening. Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah on tax reform, uh, the Turkey president's top advisor said that 2% for the tax rate at this point seems unlikely. Is the president prepared to back off of that demand for 15%? The president is prepared to push for as low of a rate as we can get. We're going to continue to push for that and work with Congress to make sure we get the best deal possible. Based on conversations, it seems like they're hovering around 20 percent. Would he accept a 20 percent? Again, the president's focused on getting the best deal possible. We're going to continue working to make sure we get that done. Sarah. Hunter? Sarah, Can I just ask you. you one on North Korea, Sarah? The president tweeted uh, on January 2nd it won't happen. He said North Korea just stated that it is in the final stages of developing a nuclear weapon capable of reaching parts of the U.S. It won't happen. Does he stand by that assessment given everything? that he has seen all of the nuclear provocations from North Korea. Again, the president's committed to taking every step uh, and keeping all options on the table in order to uh, have a denuclearized uh, Korean peninsula. Sarah, Hunter. Sarah, Sarah. Foreign propaganda. Uh, Hunter. Thank you. Um, does the president believe that he needs to secure funding for a border wall before DACA? And I also have a second quick question. Uh, again, I think it would be, as Mark Short said, and as your colleague pointed out, it would be premature for us to make those determinations at this point. Uh, but certainly something uh, that we want to make sure happens is that there is a wall that's something the president's committed to, uh, but we also want comprehensive immigration reform. Blake? Also, uh, will the president be reading Hillary Clinton's book? And what does he think about the <laughs> excerpts that have gotten out so far? Uh, whether or not he's going to read Hillary Clinton's book, I am not sure, but I would think that uh, he's pretty well 
versed on what happened, and I think it's pretty clear to all of America. Um, I think it's sad that after Hillary Clinton ran one of the most negative campaigns in history and lost, and the last chapter of her public life is going to be now defined by propping up book sales with false and reckless attacks, uh, and I think that that's a sad way for her to continue this war. Thank you, Sarah. I have two questions. <coughs> First, uh, the Treasury Secretary said this morning that uh, Janet Yellen is, uh, is being considered for re reappointment as Fed Chair. Um, is that something the President is considering? Is she on the short list? And how close is the President to making that decision? When we have a personnel announcement, we'll certainly make sure everybody in the room knows. Um, I wanted to ask you about what the President said about North Korea earlier. Uh, he said that the UN Security Council re resolution was nothing compared to what ultimately will have to happen. Um, is the President considering uh, actions including uh, cutting off Chinese banks from the U.S. financial system. As we've said many times before, that all options are on the table. Uh, that hasn't changed. The President's also said that he wants every country involved to step up and do more. Uh, this was a small step in that process, and we're hoping that they'll all take a greater role uh, and a more active role in putting pressure on North Korea. A uh, mo moment ago, uh, you've used the language responsible immigration reform. A moment ago, you said comprehensive immigration reform. I think the goal, again, responsible immigration reform, making sure that we have uh, the principles that we've laid out and that I've laid out from up here uh, accomplished in that package. So that's comprehensive as it had been talked about before. Yeah, responsible immigration reform. Yeah. Sarah, Blake. Sarah. Thank you. You've talked a lot about cutting deals uh, here with the President. Mark Short earlier today said that one of the lessons of the fall is you can't necessarily rely on 50 to 52 Republicans. And then he went on to say, we don't feel like we can assume that we can get tax reform done strictly on a partisan basis. So is it the belief of the White House that you are going to need Democrats in the Senate to get this across the finish line? I think it's the belief of the White House that we want to have bipartisan support. Uh, as I said several times earlier today, the goal is to have everybody come together and help uh, provide tax relief for Americans across the board. We hope Democrats want to be part of that process. They certainly should. I think you need them, though. I mean, what Mark Short said is, what we learned from health care reform is even though people have been talking since 2010 about doing one thing, that's not necessarily what they might do in 2017.